Hey, what's going on guys? So, new setup, LED lights, nice looking lamp over there. So things are going well at the moment with CM Media. I'm starting to get a bit more work here and there. So for the better half of the year, I've been working at my portfolio. I've been constantly hammering at it week in, week out. I'm finally getting to a point in the business where people are noticing my work. They're reaching out to me, they're inquiring about prices, and I'm getting a lot more work from it. And in doing so, instead of just investing the money back into camera gear and equipment, lighting, that's all well and good, and that's what I need to do to grow this business. But you know what? I figured I would invest in a nicer looking setup. And that's what all this is right now. It's a, a bit nicer vibe for you guys. And it kind of motivates and inspires me to put some more effort into making these videos for you guys because one, I want these to be educational, but mainly I just want you to just, you know, get out there and just do it. You have an idea, just fucking do it. Anyway, with that aside, the purpose of this video is actually just more like a tutorial showing you my workflow in the process of how I go dealing with clients and using Lightroom as a online gallery. A lot of people don't know that you can actually use Lightroom to present your photos to your clients and you don't have to pay for other other different platforms that do the same thing. You can use Lightroom, the same software that you're using to edit. And I've been trying to learn about um, what to do with photography. Do you show the clients your raw images or do you choose the photos that you're going to edit and that you think are the best for the client and then just edit them and then present them? Well, I went out and I asked multiple different people about, about this, but I didn't ask photographers. I wanted to ask customers. I wanted to ask different clients what they want out of a photo shoot and if they're paying money, what do they expect? So you will have some photographers who will take the photos, they will go through them, sort out maybe a thousand, two thousand, depending on the event, and they will narrow it down to the photos that they're going to edit, the photos that they think uh, have the best lighting, best composition, etc., and they will edit them, present the final product. But then you have other photographers that actually give a selection to the client, so they will narrow it down to a few hundred or maybe not less than that, depending on how many photos the client is going to purchase. They will narrow it down, present a selection to them, the client chooses the photos that they reckon that they look good in, and then the photographer will edit those photos and then present the final product to them after however long. Now, when I was talking to people about this, they all chose and they all loved the idea of selecting their own photos mainly because you will get people who don't care about how they look or anything like that and they're just gonna be happy. But then you're going to get people who are very particular in the way they look. They're very specific in certain angles. They know their features, they know themselves, they know if they look good from this angle compared to this angle and all that. So by giving the option to those people, they get to choose the photos they look best in and that's gonna be the photos that you edit. So this reduces the risk of them being unhappy with the final product. So I will show you the steps that I go through in Lightroom uh, so that maybe you wanna incorporate this into your business. Maybe you're just starting out as a photographer like, I've, like I have been and you just wanna know what's a good way to go about this. But then again, this is just my workflow. This is what works for me. I'm sure there's hundreds of other ways to go about this. I just can't really afford to pay for another another platform that presents a nice online gallery for the clients. I found out that you can do it in Lightroom. I'm already paying for Lightroom, so have at it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are gonna fire up Lightroom. Okay, so once we've got Lightroom opened up, we're going to import some photos first. And when we import the photos, we are going to be creating a thing called Smart Previews. Now, Smart Previews, if you don't know what that is, all it is is a smaller file size of the original photo. Now, the reason why we do this and we make these Smart Previews is to create a much quicker workflow, especially for when you are going through all your photos and trying to sort them out and trying to get them down to a select few or a select 50 or a select 100. Now these are the photos that we want to watermark and send to the client on that online gallery for them to select the photos that they wish to have edited. Now I pretty much import everything from a hard drive directly into Lightroom just because I like to back everything up onto a hard drive first. That's just my own 
personal preference. Uh, whatever your preference is, you can go ahead and do what you do. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to select a few photos. And then if you go across to the right, I usually click minimal, and then you want to tick the box that says build smart previews, then import. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna upload all the photos and build those smart previews, and it's probably gonna take like one, five, maybe 10 minutes, depending on how many photos you're doing. So use that time, go make a coffee, go have a shower, I don't know. But you are going to wait for those photos and this is gonna save you so much time in the long run. And so once all that's done, you're gonna get this pop-up. Smart previews were built or already exist for 27 photos. You're gonna click OK. Now, if you go across to the right hand side up the top here, you're gonna see original plus smart preview and you'll see that you'll see that written for any photo that you click on. That's just indicating that you have the original file attached to this, this photo here in Lightroom in the catalog, as well as a smart preview, which is the smaller file size. So if we close off Lightroom and then we take out the hard drive and then reopen Lightroom, you'll see that those photos are still there. They're still here in Lightroom in the catalog, except you'll notice that the, the original file is missing. That's because we've taken out the hard drive. And because of this, and we're not dealing with these larger file sizes, we can go through these photos, select the ones that we want much quicker. And your laptop is gonna work a lot faster. It's not gonna lag. You're not gonna get frustrated because you can really, really get to a point where you're pulling out your hair just because you can't get through this process. So that brings us to the next step in this whole process. We are going to be going through all the photos, sorting them out, finding the best ones, uh, you want to actually present to the client. So if you double click on the first one, we're going to be using the arrows on your keyboard along with the letters P, U and X. P is flagging the photos, so meaning that you that's something that you want. U is removing that flag and then X is rejecting the photo completely. If you don't like the photo at all, you can just get rid of it. So I'm gonna go along here and I'll show you. So. This one, I'm gonna reject that one. These two are similar. I think I like the first one better, so I'm gonna pick P, which I flag it. For the next one, I'm going to go X, which is rejected. Next one, rejected. Rejected, eyes are closed. These two are very similar. I'm gonna reject the first one, and I'm gonna flag the second one. Oh, I like that third one, actually. So I'm gonna remove that flag by hitting U. Actually, I'm gonna reject that one if I'm not gonna use it. And then next, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this and go through the whole lot. So once you've done that, you can then go ahead and click on this little flag icon. I uh, click it and then it'll come up with the photos that you've just selected. Uh, for this for this instance, I've selected six photos, which I like. Now, if you're dealing with a lot more photos, you can go on to the next phase, which is actually rating each photo by stars. And you can do the same process, except for example, you would go along with the photos and hit one. So I set a rating to one, one star. If I didn't like that one, I wouldn't rate it. Next one, didn't rate it. Might put a one there, put a one there. If you don't like, if you made a mistake, you can change that and put a zero. You can go along and follow this same process all the way up to five stars. This is for if you're dealing with like, if you've got like 500 to 1,000, maybe 2,000 photos that you're sorting through, this really helps narrow it down and it, it's just, it moves so quickly. Like as soon as I hit the button to go to the next photo, boom, it's there straight away. No hesitation, no lag nothing whatsoever and that's because we're working with the, sm the smart previews. I'm gonna stick with these six photos to show you how to export these with your watermark. And so from this stage, what we're going to do is we're gonna click back down here. We're gonna select all of them. So click the first photo, hold down shift, click the last, go file, export. Now it's gonna say that the original files, the originals are missing from some of these images. That's because we took out the hard drive, but that's okay because we can send the smart previews to the client because these are the watermarked. So these are obviously not the photos that you'll be finally presenting to your client in the end. These are just there for the client to select which photos they want edited. So we're gonna click yes. 
gonna pop up with this. Then you scroll down and you're gonna click watermark. If you haven't already got a watermark yet, you can go into here and edit watermarks. Here you can put in your logo, whatever your watermark is. You can readjust the size, opacity, make it really, make it really difficult if anyone wants to try and download these. This is just to prevent them from downloading the raw images because these, these are not your final products. Anyway, you can do that, upload it through there. Once you've done that, you make sure this is checked, watermark, done, boom, 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 export. Then you'll export these and then open up your documents wherever you ended up saving them to. I've saved them here. Once you've done that, you can get, then go back into Lightroom and you go into import again. Go to where you exported these photos. You don't have to build smart previews again. You can just import these because they are already a smaller file size. Once you've done that, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna go to collections. And you're gonna go create new collection. This one we're just gonna call Lightroom Tutorial. Tutorial, I don't know how to spell it, don't I? You're gonna go create. Now in this Lightroom tutorial, if the, all the photos didn't go in there, you just select them all again and drag them over to your collection. In your collection, you're gonna right click and go up to uh, sync with Lightroom. You're gonna check that. And what that's doing is that's going to sync all the photos to your cloud, to Adobe Cloud. And if it's not syncing, just come up to the top right corner and you can click pause or start. Uh, syncing. Okay, so once that's all that's finished syncing, you're gonna come over to uh, the collection again, right click it, come up to Lightroom links, view on web. Now this is going to take you online and it's gonna take you to this, it's this online platform for Lightroom. And you're gonna see all the photos pop up here. Now this is how we make the online gallery. You come up here to the little head with the plus sign, click on that, here you can change the display and everything, uh, click this, you can change the background, you can change what the layout is, if you want like just boxes or collage, totally up to you, it doesn't go too in depth of what you can change, but there's some slight changes to make it more, to make it more customizable. But you come up here to this little head with a plus sign again, you go to settings, and now here you want to make sure that this is not checked on. You don't want to allow downloads and exports. So make sure that's turned off. off. Uh, but you do want to have turned on allow comments and likes because you want the client to be able to like the photos they want edited. So once all, that's all done, you can get shareable link and you just copy link to clipboard. And then once you've done that, you can go back into Lightroom, do the same right click on the collection, come up to Lightroom links, and you can go ahead and make this collection public. Once you click that, it then releases it so that anyone with the link are able to view the photos. So once you've done that, you can even go back into Lightroom links, click view on web. Now this here is what your customer will see. So here's what your client will see on their screen, on their end, and they will only see those photos that are in that collection. And then they can go ahead, click on one, and they can also leave a heart or a comment. Now let's just go pretend I'm the client and I'm gonna click a heart there. Boom, I like that. I wanna go to the next photo and pretend like I like that. We'll click that, leave a heart, next photo. Oh, I like that, leave a heart. And now once the client leaves a heart, I received all of that information back over on my Lightroom. Boom. You see this little speech bubble? That means that the client has liked those photos. The last one should pop up here any moment now. Boom, there it is. So there you have it. I received that information straight away as soon as the client likes the photos. Then I can simply go ahead, make all my shadow highlight adjustments, then I can link the hard drive back into the laptop with the original file and all of the adjustments that I have just made link straight onto the photo straight away. And then you can just go ahead and edit all the photos to the best of your ability. And then once you're done, you do the exact same process 
to give the final photos to your client. The only change that you will do is, for example, we'll use this one for example. This is a photo shoot I have just recently finished up on. And you would go back into the collection, right click, Lightroom links, view on web. So this is what you see and you only see this. And you would go to that little man with the plus sign, go to settings, and you will make sure that allow downloads and export is switched on. So then when your client gets that last link, they have the option to come up here to the three dots, click that and download all the photos in one go to their device. And that's pretty much it guys. Like it can seem very overwhelming in the beginning stages. I sure as hell was very overwhelmed when I started looking into this. It took a bit of repetition to understand how it works, a bit of back and forth, checking what the client's going to see, making sure that it's going to be easy for them to download. But once you start getting the rhythm of it, once you start using it, this process quite a bit more and a bit more, it becomes so good because it's so simple. You're already using Lightroom and you can easily give the client the choice of which photos they want edited. And this just reduces the risk of them being unhappy with the final product. So I really hope you like this video, guys. I hope you took a lot of value out of it. Uh, maybe you're gonna incorporate this workflow into your own business, or if you're just starting out as well, maybe you might like to give this a go. And if you do, please let me know down in the comments or even DM me on Instagram. Let me know if you use a different platform for your presenting your online gallery. Um, if it's worth paying for and, and all that. I'd love to know because um, I always want to get better and upgrade and level up in what I'm doing. If you do have any questions about any of this, please ask them in the comments down below or you can send me a DM on Instagram. I'll leave my name just down here. So if you did like this video and you took some value from it, maybe consider liking and subscribing. It helps my channel out a great deal. And with all that said and done, never stop creating and I hope to catch you in the next one. See ya.